Okay, so let's check out the LFOs. We got two of them. Uh, last video we talked about the mod envelopes and how to route them in the matrix. Let's do the same, but using the LFOs. So let me choose like a different uh, wave table here, maybe like a complex. We'll go with plastic shimmer. Let's go down. Okay, nice. Uh, so LFOs. Um, first of all, let's take the LFO one and apply it to the wavetable position. Let's go even lower. Nice. So let's go over the controls here. First of all, we have the attack, which introduce um, kind of a fade in into the modulation. Double click to reset. Uh, you, it, right now it, it's not synchronized and it's moving by Hertz. You can synchronize it with this note icon and here we'll see the rate. We'll talk about it in a second. Retrig will always start the LFO from the same place. So if it's retrig and I hit it, we hear the same type of sound. If I turn off the retrig, the LFO will always continuously moving in the background and when we trigger it, we just grab it wherever it is. So even though I'm triggering different notes, we can see it keeping moving. Uh, so that's the retrig. If you want an expected control sound, uh, retrig. If you just needed to constantly change the sound, uh, even without you playing, turn the retrig off. Uh, rate is the speed of the uh, LFO. And if, again, you can synchronize it. So now it's by note divisions according to your BPM. So if I change the BPM, it's going to speed it up and slow it down. Uh, amount is another way to control the amount of the modulation. We can control it from the uh, actual uh, amount of in the matrix. Let's put it back on 50. But we can also control it from the amount here. That will uh, change the amount. Here we can change the shape, uh, which will give us different types of shapes. So right here we can select the shape, the wave shape, waveform of the LFO, sine wave, triangle, saw, square, and noise. Uh, so using the shape control, we can get even more shapes. This is like a pulse width. So um, a very useful control to expand the amount of shapes that you can get out of the LFO. And offset will offset the starting point of the LFO. Let's slow it down. So here I'll start from the bottom. From the top and so on. Uh, so changing the way you where the LFO starts from. LFO two is the exact same thing, and you can apply both of them to whatever you want, even to the same control, which will make it uh, behave in all kinds of way. And reminding you to apply it to different things, we can just click on it. For example, the frequency, and then apply how much we want. Let's put it on hertz. So now it's on the filter. You can even do it to each other. So I can, for example, take LFO2 and apply it maybe to the LFO1 rate by just clicking on it. LFO1 rate. Maybe synchronize that. So they can kind of modulate each other, which is very interesting. Of course, the position. So you can, can create a lot of uh, interesting sequences by just uh, start modulating each other. Uh, so we got um, five different modulators here that you can use in all sorts of ways. You can modulate so many things by just clicking on them and deciding which one to modulate with. You can modulate, of course, uh, multiple things with the same one, which will create all sorts of behaviors. And if you're closed in the view, uh, in the matrix, you can just click on the modulator. It will jump to it um, for directly from the matrix, so it's easier to access. Nice. Um, so those were the LFOs, LFO1, LFO2. Um, 
highly useful, super fun to use. As you can see, not that complex. It's up to you how complex you make the sound. Okay, catch you next time.